guys, what is up? My name is Jurocroft and I finally welcome you to another epic journey through the Kingdoms of Greymane build series. As you guys may already know, this project marks the very beginning of my YouTube channel and in each episode we like to make some serious upgrades. In the last adventure we transformed the outer reaches of the city and even started construction of an underground sewage system called the Undercity. In today's episode I feel like it's finally time to take a journey into the heart of the mountain, the city's main fortress to begin with a massive interior transformation. You guys just won't believe, so sit back, relax and enjoy as we begin today's adventure. Right guys, so here we are at the main entrance into the fortress. Some of you may not know what's inside, but unfortunately the original design is completely outdated and partially destroyed, with missing parts and even a giant chunk of blocks randomly spawned right in the middle of our bury. I feel like it's time not just to transform this interior, but completely scrap the old content and introduce a much more epic version that's at least five times larger than the original. Now in order to make this work, we yet again have to transform the landscape for about the third time, just in order to accommodate a much larger interior. This was most probably one of the more time consuming parts of the project, but it just had to be done if we do want all that extra space within the fortress. Right guys, now here is where the adventure really begins, as we start making our way through the castle and transforming the older content. Firstly with the transformation of the grand entrance. The grand entrance will grant you access to different parts of the fortress. Lately I've been catching up with the last season of Game of Thrones and I kind of got inspired into building a massive throne room, which will be found right at the end of this main hallway. So to finish off the grand entrance, all we have to do is introduce a new ceiling design, add in some final decorations and build a main entrance that leads back out into the city. I've added some chains on either side of the gate just to give it the appearance that it can be opened and closed. Really, if I could get this to work with redstone, I totally would, but I just don't know how to. You guys would just have to convince someone like Mumbo Jumbo to get it done, which would be absolutely amazing. But apart from that, the grand entrance has seen a massive transformation. Despite the changes, I did stick to the same kind of concept and we now have nine different passageways that will let you guys explore around the fortress. Right guys, it is now time for the biggest transformation yet. To give you a size comparison, the original throne room was just 40 blocks in depth, relatively small compared to the all new design which cuts into the mountain with a depth of almost 200 blocks. I wanted to build a throne not just for the ruler of Kingdoms of Greymane, but a throne fit for the Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and protector of the realm. At least if you do watch Game of Thrones, that would kind of make sense. But the whole idea was to build a massive, royal and extravagant throne room for a very, very powerful person. Now I've decided to use red as the main theme colour, introducing some really elaborate designs to try and decorate the room as much as possible. But despite everything, one of the most challenging parts of this build was actually something super ridiculous. And that was my obsession with trying to find ways to light up the entire room without overexposing tons of glowstone. If you do take a closer look, you can see I've hidden glowstone within the actual walls, mostly using copper to hide some of the blocks. So to finally finish off this room, I've decorated the ceiling, added in those final details and even built some massive chained lanterns which hopefully will give that extra bit of lighting. I also got the idea of using red stained glass to resemble the appearance of silk drapes just kind of hanging down from the ceiling which I think was a nice final touch to include. Altogether the throne room has had a huge, huge makeover. The ceiling is now over 200 blocks above the ground floor which is nothing compared to its 20 block predecessor. All that's really left to do is connect the throne room to the grand entrance hall we built earlier. Now believe it or not, despite all the landscaping at the start of the video, the throne room still managed to break through the surface of the valley, which is just crazy. But nonetheless, we need to fix this before we continue. Yeah. 
Right then guys, it is time to take a step back and start working on something a little simpler. On the right side of the fortress, originally this featured a dining room, kitchen and brewery. So we're going to stick to that initial idea and start working on the kitchen. At first, this room did start off relatively small, but after considering the size of the other rooms we built, I think it's a good idea to at least double the size. We can't make the kitchen too big because of course that would be almost impossible to furnish. Overall, we need a place to store food, cook and provide some catering to the dining hall. Right, so now we can head down over the other side of the corridor. This actually takes us down to the old brewery, which frankly is just a huge mess of blocks and needs a complete makeover. We're going to pretty much scrap the old content and completely rebuild the entire brewery. I want this to be a place that makes beer and wine, as well as a place that you can go for a drink. The whole idea is to give this room a tavern-like atmosphere, decorating the new design with the same concept as the original, just hopefully a lot less messy. Introducing barrels of of wine and beer, a working bar, tables and chairs, as well as a few places to store food and drink. Right guys, so this first corridor now leads down to the kitchen and brewery, with the dining hall which needs to be built right at the very end. We also need to find a way to transform and connect the library to the new grand entrance, as well as redesigning the entrance that leads down into the mines, where we just have a ton of really cool possibilities to work with. Unfortunately, I am leaving to Belgium tomorrow, so I need to end this episode here, because I still need to pack. So if you guys enjoyed this video, become a fellow explorer, subscribe and join in our future adventures. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. This is Jerocraft over and out.